Hey, welcome back to the Fadi Show podcast. This is your host. Honestly, we already know the deal. This isn't the Fadi Show. This is the Yapper 5000. That's all I do on the show. That's all I do. I just yap. I just get on here, have a sip of coffee, and just talk shit for two hours. That's what I do. That's my thing. I'm really good at that. I'm going to keep doing it, and I'm going to do it for as long as people are listening. Honestly, probably beyond that, too. Even when people are not listening, I'm going to keep doing it. And uh, I don't think anybody is listening. I feel like I'm just uh, talking into the void, just echoing into nothing, just bouncing off the walls of my room and the internet, just bouncing off the walls of the ether that is the internet. No, but, uh, you know, I, I, I like talking. I feel like I get some of that, you know, um, yap instinct out of my system when uh, I do these podcasts. Just for two hours, I just uninterrupted, just gets, gets to talk shit for two hours. It actually has helped my social life a lot. I get these two hours in every week. It's like working out. I do this here and I don't interrupt people when they try to talk to me. When they're trying to tell a story, I don't go, oh, well, actually, I did something similar. And then it's totally not the same thing. Somebody can be talking about their prostate exam. And I was like, I had an exam once. Didn't involve finger in the butt. But however, it was a test. Imagine being a fucking prostate doctor a prostate specialist, you really, you specialize in men's butts, pretty gay, that sounds pretty gay to me, who specializes in prostates, who goes to med school and goes, you know what, I'm gonna focus on the asshole, the whole human body, gay, you had the whole human body to fucking, you could have been practicing, I don't know, Kidney kidney specialist? Is there such a thing? Is there such a thing as a kidney specialist? I don't know. I'm drinking coffee. I just popped 4,000 milligrams of lion's mane. And I have a nicotine pouch in my upper lip. So uh, this is going to be a, a, a very um, wired episode. So stay tuned. I'm wearing a v-neck because uh, I'm a douchebag. If you're just listening to the podcast and you're not watching this on YouTube, I'm wearing a V-neck right now. It's not that deep of a V-neck. It's, honestly, I'm not that big of a douchebag. If I was a colossal douchebag, like I would have a V-neck that just the tip of the V just reaches down to my belly button. But this one is like, honestly, it's barely going past my collarbones. So I think I'm good. I think I'm good on the V-neck department. I remember I made this one video one time where I was just the the beginning sentence to the video is why are you wearing an uns, why is your shirt uncircumcised and it was a turtleneck and that that joke carried the whole video like that was the first sentence of the video and and that had nothing to do with the whole premise of the sketch it was just a sentence that I wanted to get off my chest and everybody in the comments were like, that that was my favorite part of the video. I stayed and watched the whole video through because, yeah, turtlenecks look like uncircumcised shirts. I don't know. It's interesting. It's interesting. Um, uh, I, um, I just dropped an ad recently on my TikTok and it's not doing well. It's not doing well. It's not getting a lot of views. And you know why? Because the people that I worked with, they just refused to let me do my creative thing. I mean, they let me do my creative thing. They for sure did. But the way these guys sent me notes, like criticizing the video was insane. It was the most rude thing I had ever heard. I don't even know if I can talk about it until like the campaign is finished because I just posted it. I, I, I mean, I can talk about it. It's for this ad for this for this app this game and it's, it's a it's an all right game it's a cool game i'm just saying like the way that they like i sent them a script and the rudest notes they're like this is grammatically incorrect and i'm like don't tell me what's grammatical. you're a chinese company you're a chinese company this is grammatically correct you can say this 
And then they're like, oh, in the end, where he talks about shitting himself, because <laughs> that was part of the ad where I just go, oh, yeah, I just pooped my pants. I shit myself. And they're like, we can't use that kind of language. I was like, all right. I changed it for soiling myself. Still gets the point across. It's just another word, another terminology. I send them a draft. They send it back, edited. They edited the video and said, I don't know why this was kept up. Why did he insist? <laughs> why did he insist on talking about soiling himself? That's not appropriate for an ad. I'm like, that's funny. That's funny. It was like the end punchline to the video. And they cut it out and it just did not make sense. The video did not make sense at the end. It made sense throughout, but in the end, it was just like so anticlimactic. Trust me, the soiling yourself part was critical. It was critical part of the ad. It would have really sold the game if you let me say soiling myself. I immersed myself in shit. But they just, they didn't want to go for it. And uh, I uploaded the video and they're going to have to deal with the repercussions of, you know, not being bold, so to say. You got to have boldness. You got to be bold. Anyways, it's a, it's an interesting, it's an interesting uh, dynamic. Just seeing non-comedy people try to give you notes on a comedy sketch because they're paying for the ad. And it's like, cool, you're, you're giving me some money, which is nice because this is my only source of income. Literally, it's my only source of income. So I'm like, I'm more open to notes. I'm not going to be like, this is cre creatively. Um, it's, it's, it's disrupting my uh, comedic integrity to, you know, I'm not going to do all that. I'm going to try to work with what they're giving me, obviously. Is it too bright? Am I too? Because the sun just started really shining. Anyways, I'm not going to be like fucking all high and mighty. About like whatever parameters you give me, I can work within them and I can, I feel like I can still be creative within those parameters, except for when you tell me you, I, I can't say shit myself. Come on now. Come on. That's, that's going too far. That's going too far. You, you better let me tell the people that I soiled myself now, but I can work within the parameters, but the way that they just, they had been dragging out this project for months, months. When I say months, I mean like four months imagine waiting for a paycheck for four months um i'm not complaining this is like the greatest job on literally the greatest job on earth i love what i do this is the greatest thing ever um but i waited so long for them to you know that i just didn't want to go back and forth all right let's do a new script and let, let me reshoot it and make it even funny i'm like honestly just fucking let's go with this because yeah i was just like there's no I, I, it's gonna be until fall it's going to take until fall before anything really happens. If I tell them, no, let's do another concept. And I just didn't want to deal with them anymore. So I just posted the video, how they sent it to me. I was like, all right, see what happens. See what happens. So. God damn it. I just got coffee on the microphone. That was. I got a little too excited. This is the lion's mane. 4,000 milligrams of lion's mane. I feel like I can uh, re-erect the Ottoman Empire. I would never want to re-erect the Ottoman Empire. Are you kidding me? I'm Catholic. If anything, it's the Roman Empire. I need to get this coffee stain off of... Do I just wipe it with my finger? Ugh. I feel like a savage. Uh, where do I, why, I just saw my pants, fuck it, I mean my shorts, I mean my shorts are brown, so, it's cool, see, it's camouflaged, just camouflage the coffee in my shorts, so whenever someone smells my shorts, because that's definitely gonna happen, somebody's definitely gonna bump into me and tell me, hey, can I sniff your shorts, and I'm gonna be like, yeah, sure, and they'll smell coffee, they're like, hmm, a hint of uh, Arabica bean, Yeah, man. Shout out Catholicism. I don't, I don't really, I don't, I don't accept, I don't appreciate how, how Catholics have gotten this reputation of touching kids. 
They do, but I don't like the reputation. Stop it. Do you know that, you know, you're twice as likely to get molested by a public school teacher than a priest or anybody from, you know, the Catholic church? You really want to protect your kids? Fucking get them out of public school. Honestly, private school kids, I don't know, they, they, they're, they're kind of off to me. Maybe because maybe cause public school kids don't really have to worry about getting touched. So they just go through life thinking everything is like shit sweet. It's not sweet. You can get touched at any moment. You can get touched at any moment of the day. You're over here walking around dick swinging, thinking nobody's going to touch it. You're going to get touched. And you need to act like it. Protect yourself. Wear a cup. Anyways. <laughs> I just need to get that off my chest. I, I found I found out a, a public school teacher are twice as more likely to molest your kid than uh, the Catholic church. Ever since then, I've just been... I've been rocking the Catholicism with pride. I mean, I have. Day one. Are you kidding me? The one true religion. <laughs> the only true correct religion is Catholicism. Come on now. Catholic Church to me is like a science park. We have the coolest saints. Our saints fight dragons. St. George. Shout out St. George. Fight, fought a dragon. Come on. Saved princesses. It's like the archetype. It's like the, the hero's archetype. <clears throat> I remember one time I was um, out of my mind off of shrooms. And um, a lion's mane. <laughs> Just lion's mane. Nothing crazy. And um, I was uh, at one point during the lion's mane trip. Um... I felt like a sense of like fear and worry and uh, I don't know what it was, but somehow triumphantly, I saw myself as a knight in shining armor, like a white armor, not even silver, like a white armor of steel and how I just had to persist through the winds. It was like strong winds blowing. It was weird. It was strong winds blowing, and I had this knight's, like, long spear in my hand, and I was wearing the armor, and I just had to, like, sit through the storm with my armor, and everything was supposed to work out. Not supposed to, but everything would be okay if I just waited out the storm in my armor. I don't know. I just I felt like St. George for a second there. I wasn't fighting no dragons. I was just fighting the wind. I was just fighting the wind. It wasn't even <laughs> a dragon that I fought. And my in my shroom trip, I was fighting the wind. I was battling wind. I was battling low pressure in one zone, which caused the wind to fly towards me in a, at a rapid speed. And I had to fight wind. So that's pretty cool. I was fighting wind for a second there. Anyways, shout out Catholicism. Um, it's cool. It's cool. I talk about that in my stand-up set. I just talk about uh, Catholicism, religion. No subject that I don't dare to touch on stage. I don't think there should be any subjects that you can't talk about on stage if you can make it funny you can make it funny yeah but yeah it was, it was cool vibes cool vibes yeah I, I came down from that trip feeling like a more confident version of myself very calm very poised <clears throat> yeah I feel good didn't want to do it again that 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 trip was so much that trip was so much that it just, I was like, I never want to do this again. And I'm good. And it's been years. It's been years since uh, 
I did shit like that. But, you know, it. I think I was going into it, I was a little more anxious. And in the beginning of the trip, I was just like, because I was in, I was with my homies in LA. And my homie wanted to get a taco. The bro, the bro Hampton, my bro Hampton. He wanted to get a taco. And I was like, fuck it. These things haven't hit yet. Because I had downed them. And I was like, all right, yeah, nothing has hit yet. So let's go get some tacos. And on the way there, it was cool. But as I was waiting there, shit started like looking weird. Shit started morphing. Like I was waiting for the tacos with my friends. I wasn't even hungry. I just walked with him. It was late at night. And he um, he was wearing this uh, orange uh, hoodie. And while we were waiting for the tacos, I was starting to freak out a little bit. I was like looking at him. And I, I looked at the, the little taco tent that they had going on. And there was people like waiting and eating tacos. And I was like, damn, I feel so vulnerable right now. Like if somebody came and tried to kidnap me or fight me, I could not fight back. I feel like a child. I feel super vulnerable. And it started to freak me out because I was like, I can't protect myself. I am not I am not independent right now at all. And uh, as someone was sitting and eating tacos, like his face slowly started morphing into a, like a duck's head. Like he started getting like the, the fucking, the beak, a duck beak. And I was like, bro, that guy is definitely staring at me. He knows I'm tripping. He definitely knows. He knows everything about me. Just a guy eating his taco. And I was like, bro, I, I can't stand around these people. I have to like move away a little bit. And then my homie was like, can you, can you wait? Just, I just ordered the tacos like two minutes and they'll be done. I was like, all right, all right, all right. I, I can, I can wait. And then I kept tripping and I was like, oh, fuck. It's, it's like starting to go up. It's starting to rile up. And on the way back, we were walking. And uh, my homie, he had his tacos. And he slowly started morphing into like a fox. I think it was his orange hoodie that just made me feel like he was morphing into a fox. And I was like, do I tell him? Do I tell him that he's a fox? And I was like, fuck, fuck, you tripping. You got to come on. Get, get, get back home. Get back to the house. And on the way back, I'm just seeing like, I'm looking around North Hollywood and I'm like, damn, there's so much poverty around us. Dude, there's so much poverty around us. This is so fucked up. What are we doing as a society? What are we doing, man? We are so wrong for letting this poverty happen. I saw like a car with a broken headlight and I was like, damn, this is poor car, poor owner of the car. There's so much poverty. People are starving. And we kept walking back. And as soon as we got to the house, my homies who were also tripping, um, they were just sitting and watching music videos. And there was like neon lights going on. I was like, okay, we're in the safe house. We're safe. We're good. And then I started to calm down. I was like, fuck, I, I don't want to step outside. That was so bad. And um, yeah, that was, um, that was the beginning of the trip. And then... I laid on the couch, fucking literally sunk in the cushions, felt like I was in a giant vagina. I, I, it was so comfortable. It was crazy. Took a sip of like this big gulp, fucking Coca-Cola, whatever the fuck it was, to a straw. I just took a sip and it felt like I, I just went through a wormhole. I saw the whole universe. I literally f did a speed run through the universe. I saw like galaxies and I was just like, you know, those uh, websites where you can like zoom in into the world and zoom out and you can just like go further and further away and just see, you know, back up from like Earth and you just see galaxies and everything from like an atom and you just back up and go through galaxies and you go through like the, the, the Earth and planets and solar systems and I was just going through that but like zooming in and like going through the history of the earth and the world and the, the the universe it was such a fucking weird trip but yeah um i was uh that was that was a bad trip not a bad trip it was it was a cool trip but fucking eight hours dude eight hours way too long way too long nothing needs to go on for the more than four hours ever
But yeah, that. And the thing is, it was carbonated, so the bubbles made it feel like even more trippy. And I kept looking at my phone as like, yo, did I upload something to my Snapchat story? Did I upload something fucked up? Because I was like recording shit, thinking I was going to, you know, catch something on camera. I was like, dude, I got to save this. This is crazy. And I kept saving stuff and filming stuff. And I was like, dude, did, did I upload something on my Snapchat story? And people were like, no, you didn't. Just put your phone down. And I was like, dude, I think I uploaded. They're like, you uploaded nothing. Just relax. And I was like, dude, I, I definitely. And then I was like, okay, cool. Put my phone down, brought it up. And I was like, again, a couple of minutes later, I was like, fuck, I think I uploaded this. I mean, there was nothing there. But I kept trying to save videos. Um, that was like years and years ago, though. Years and years. It was like two and a half years, maybe. But yeah, ever since then, I was like, I'm cool off of that. I'm cool off of that. I, 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 I met God. At one point, I was like, damn, God is in all of us. There was like a light beam from the sky. We were indoors, but I saw a light beam from the sky just shine right down at me. And I was like, damn, there's a bright light inside of me. It's God. And there's a bright light in everyone. Everyone's part of God. We're just nodes in a giant system. We're just nodes in a, in a we're like in a brain. We're neurons. We're neurons in a giant brain. The collective intelligence of all of us. We're like neurons. We're brain cells. <laughs> yeah, it was, um, got off of that and I was like, dude, we're not doing that shit again. We're not doing that shit again, bro. That's crazy. But yeah, it was a interesting day. Interesting day. Um, this was all off of Lion's Mane, just to be clear. Definitely just Lion's Mane. Completely legal fungi. Fungi. It is a, I am a fungi, aren't I? I'm pretty fun, and I'm a guy. Pretty good fungi. Um, yeah, man. It's a cool... It's a cool experience. Don't recommend it for everyone. Don't want to do it again. If you're mentally stable. Or if you're not, you should do it. Unless you have like any schizophrenia in your family. I've heard that that's supposed to like activate it. It's like the catalyzer to start, you know, schizophrenia. If you have schizophrenia running in the family and you're at risk for it then it's like not a good idea what a horrible what a horrible illness though schizophrenia and just see and hear things that aren't there imagine just being on that on a constant shroom trip holy fuck wouldn't want to do that that'd be terrible truly literally horrors beyond my imagination just constantly in a constantly be in a state like that Thinking things are there that aren't. Um, but who, who who's to say we're not all schizophrenic? Who's to say that everything that we experience isn't just a figment of our imagination and that it's not really happening? And we're thinking everything around us is like, oh, totally fine. Meanwhile, we're like screaming on top of the lung, off the top of our lungs from everybody else's perspective. We're just crazy in a madhouse. We could be in a madhouse right now experiencing... You could be in a madhouse right now thinking you're listening to the Fadi Show podcast. Honestly, what a horrible imagination. If that's your that's your schizophrenia just <laughs> locking into my podcast. What a horrible fucking batch of shrooms. Just stick listening, just stuck listening to the Fadi Show podcast. And you're like, this is a this is a great podcast. I should keep listening to the other 60 episodes. <laughs> Yeah, it's um, it's a trip. It's a trip. Um, ah, man, I am this coffee and lion's mane and the 
the nicotine nicotine pouch it's getting to me i feel energetic i'm feeling it <clears throat> anyways um that's how i feel about my v-neck my v-neck t-shirt just a little break of pattern from the crew necks that I've been wearing. The most atrocious attire you can wear as a man is probably a very deep V-neck, a super tight shirt where your nipples are showing, and it's a fishnet. That's probably... Whenever I see a guy in a fishnet, I was like, something went wrong. Something went horribly wrong in that man's childhood. He was in public school, wasn't he? I mean, I was in public school. But, because, come on, fucking me, private school? Insane. This is insane. This is, would be an insane product of private school. Seriously. Imagine you take your kids to private school and this is how they talk. Money down the drain. Money down the drain. Yeah, and I, I was, I was, I'm, I am Catholic, and I was in public school. The fact that I went through life without getting touched is miraculous. I was in the hot spot. I was in the hot spot of getting touched, and didn't. I exposed myself to so many molesters. More than, more than your average person. Got exposed to more than your average person to molesters and just didn't. I feel like the like one of those I feel like those smokers that just smoke that just chain smoke since the age of twelve and they just grow to be a hundred and four years old. It's like how the fuck did that guy not get cancer? How the hell did he not fuck up his lungs? He's been chain smoking. The most horrible just What's the most horrible cigarette brand? I'd say, I'd say like, it's like I've been chain smoking Marlboro Reds or Prince Reds. What's that heavy shit? Like that heavy fucking tobacco. Chain smoking since the age of 14. I just grow to be 104. No health problems. That's what it feels like. <laughs> Not getting molested. It's really a miracle. But yeah, again, it doesn't give you a lot of confidence. It's like I was in the hot spot of getting molested, never got touched by anybody. You got to have some self-reflection after that point. It's like, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? I was around so many pedophiles. <laughs> no one wanted to touch me. I must have been really obnoxious. I must have been a horrible child. For every pedophile to be like, Ugh, no, not that one. <laughs> got to be introspective at that point. It's, it's, at some point, you got to be like, maybe I'm the problem. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's almost summer. Gonna be an interesting summer. I don't I have. I don't have anything planned. I don't know how this summer is gonna go. I need to book a trip. I need to book a trip to the United States of America. I need to see my homies in LA. And do totally legal stuff all the time. But yeah, I don't know where this summer is gonna go. I'm scared of the summer. I'm scared of the summer because of its potential. Great things can happen. But also it's like any other season. I mean, obviously. 
But the summer, the summer has an aura. Summer has a different aura than the other seasons. Obviously, spring. Spring is the best season. Absolute best season. I'm not biased. I'm not saying that because I was born in the spring. But it is because that's when everything starts blooming. You know, the cold. It, start, it stops being cold. It's like on the brink of getting, you know, warm. Life starts emerging. When I'm in the middle of summer, I was like, oh. Summer is like a midlife crisis. I was like, damn, shit should be happening. And it's not. It's like a midlife crisis of somebody that built a family. They have two kids, but they're not satisfied. I'm like Don Draper during the summer. I'm Don Draper. From Mad Men. He just has two kids. And instead of attending his daughter's birthday, he just goes, takes a car. It's supposed to bring the birthday cake. Just fucking fucks off to... I don't know, literally nowhere, just sits and falls asleep in the car. I've been watching Mad Men again. I started watching Mad Men from scratch. From scratch. From the beginning. I'm like on, I finished episode three. I'm like, huh, marketing guy. I'm kind of into that. (laughs) Let me watch this guy. This guy during the 60s. It literally begins with him like, hey, how can we, how can we uh, promote lucky strikes without saying that they're good for you? Because that was when, uh, that was during the time when they were clamping down on the, on the cigarette companies because they would cause, they were linked to cancer. And um, he's like, how can we promote cigarettes without saying they're healthy and good for you? They smoke so much in that show, too. That guy literally wakes up and smokes a cigarette. Like, it's insane. Who wakes up and goes, nah. Give me, give me, I don't I don't really fuck with this oxygen shit. Give me some of that carbon monoxide in my lungs. I want to fuck up my oxygen intake. I need some of that monoxide, buddy. That monoxide. I haven't really formed an opinion on that show yet. It's supposed to be a really good show. And so far, I mean, it's cool, but it's a lot about just the everyday lives of people in the 1960s in New York. And so, and it's kind of mundane. It's kind of mundane. Like, he just goes to work in Manhattan. I think he, he has a house where his, you know, wife and kids live in, like, New Jersey. And he's never there. He's never there for his family. His wife starts getting anxiety. He uh, he puts her up with this doctor, this psychiatrist. And he's like, hey, what did my wife tell you? And the doctor is like, let me let me spill the tea immediately. Like, it doesn't even pay him off. He's just like, yeah, that, you know, the doctor-patient confidentiality out the window immediately. He just calls him up at 11 p.m. and is like, is it late? Is it cool that I'm calling the doctor and I have to spill the tea on my wife and why she's nervous? And the doctor's like, do you have a seat? Sit down. I'm going to tell you everything. And it's just her freaking out about I don't know what. He's barely home. He's barely doing. He's just 4 p.m. starts drinking, which I promote. I promote drinking during the daytime before 5 p.m. I mean, heck, I literally did a podcast episode drinking at 12 p.m. I have no right to slander that man. I have no right. I started drinking three hours after waking up. Come on. I can't sit here and point fingers. <laughs> but he's barely home. And then when he when he's not home, he's like a fucking he has like three side chicks. And he's like, I'm not, I'm not satisfied with life. And when he is home, daughter's birthday, 
he builds her like a little little house in the backyard, a little princess house. And he goes, oh, yeah, I'm going to go get the birthday cake. Gets the birthday cake. Drives past his house. He just can't stand being around the guests. He's like, I'm going to just go fall asleep in the car. There's no way I'm putting up with this. I am not happy. And then he falls asleep in the car and wakes up like by a fucking railroad when a train passes by. And then he get he goes home with a new dog. Just a not even a puppy, just a full grown dog. Like, where the fuck did you get this dog? Whose dog did you steal? And the daughter is so happy, he's like, Yay, daddy brought a dog. And the wife's like, she was freaking about about no birthday cake. He's like, Did he go out and cheat on me? Like, what's the deal? But back then, you don't back talk your man. The glory days, the golden age where you didn't back talk your man. He's just drunk, shows up with a golden retriever to your daughter's birthday. Completely missed the mark about delivering the cake. <laughs> he missed his daughter's birthday. Just go sleep in the car somewhere. I don't know, it's funny. He'd rather do that and then come back with a dog. Daughter is going to grow up. He's like, where was my dad actually during the second half of my birthday? He just came back with a fully grown, like a seven-year-old dog. (laughs) But the kids were so happy to see him. They're like, this is not weird at all. This is just dad. And the wife is like, great, honey. I'm so happy for you. can't do that nowadays you can't just ditch the party you can't just ditch your daughter's birthday completely not deliver the birthday cake that your wife wrote oh all fucking hell will break loose are you kidding me where were you why didn't you answer i was worried can a guy get drunk and fall asleep in his car in peace and just bring home an animal The simpler times. Where you could just fuck off and do whatever you want. And you don't have a you don't have a bitch in your ear telling you you can't do it. Truly a golden era. The golden era. You, you would definitely hear about it the next day. I mean, fucking as soon as you walked in the door. You would get hit with, where, where were you? I can't, you're so unreliable. You're so, I can't trust you for shit. Couldn't even get you to bring a birthday cake. I can't believe it. Where were you? Did you fall asleep in the car again? I'm going to take the kids and go to my parents' house. (laughs) The funny thing to get mad about. What? A guy can't just do his thing? Just leave during a horrible birthday party? Around adults I don't give a fuck about. Men that I don't like. Men that are just the husbands of your girlfriends. I have nothing in common with these people. I hate them. And then the women just like sitting in a hen house. And the nineteen the women during the nineteen sixties vicious. Women during the nineteen sixties were vicious. They all they because they didn't have jobs. Cause you could just live off of one salary. So 
the women just, you know, be bored at the house, talk shit about each other. It would be, they would get vicious, man. A 1940s lady sitting with a, I mean, a 1960s lady just sitting around another, other 19, like five other 1960s lady, ladies, housewives. There's one thing they're going to do. They're going to talk shit. They're going to tear each other down. Passively, passive aggressively. There's no way that they like each other. They have to deal with each other. They're just neighbors. They don't have any other choice. Strange times. Strange times. And they would all just accept that men would get paid more for the same job. They're just like, oh yeah, of course he gets paid more. He's a man. And then you just watch that show and you're like, damn, harassment during like in the workplace was at an all-time high. This is insane. Everybody is fucking... The secretary. Everybody's fucking the secretaries. And the secretaries are like, you got to you gotta fuck these men. You want to keep your job? Yeah, just fuck them. Just give them a little hand job. Just whatever. It's whatever. It's part of the job. Come on. It's part of the gig. You want to keep this job or not? Also, you get paid one third of what they're getting paid. And everybody was just like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Hell, yeah. This was before HR. Dude, corporations would save so much money. They don't have to have an entire HR department. They don't have to pay women as much. Just got a few men at the top and just like 100 female secretaries because they can afford them. They go to Ivy League schools. Just to get a job as a secretary and get paid like half of what a man gets. The HR departments was just lunch break. They would just sit around and talk amongst each other. And the women would keep each other in check too. Just like, yeah, just do this for the men. Like the women are telling the other women. It's like, yeah, wear something tighter. Wear something more revealing. Come on, you got to charm these men. You got to charm them. Imagine if that's still how things were running. Holy fuck. I mean, it's terrible. It's terrible. Interesting nonetheless. It's crazy how much things have changed. Like since 60 years back. Just 60 years ago. That's just one. That's one guy getting born. And he's not even retired yet. Somebody born in the 1960s. Saw that era. And then before he got retired. Like if somebody started working. At a company like that. Like let's say 19... I say somebody was born 1950. At the age of 18, they got a job in 1968. And then by 2011, all of those things were gone. Like the workplace is completely different. That got to be such a weird change for them. Like we have an HR department. When I started this company, we didn't have anything like that. When I started this company, everybody was fucking the secretaries, the copywriters. Nobody's fucking the copywriters. You're telling me all these copywriters are going unfucked by the executives. You're telling me 50 of these copywriters 
nobody's fucked them. That's insane. Somebody should fuck these copywriters. <laughs> what are you talking about? You can't fuck the copywriter? What has this world gone to? This company has lost all its values. We used to be a company. <laughs> we used to drink at 3 p.m. What happened? You don't want a glass of scotch? You're telling me I can't drink whiskey during the meeting? It's 4 p.m. for fuck's sake. Every office also has like a tray, like a alcohol tray, like a little cart with drinks and ice and glasses. I have to keep watching that show. I have to keep watching Mad Men. <laughs> It's really slow in the beginning, though. I mean, I don't know if it picks up because I remember when I last saw it. I think I saw like seven episodes last time I watched it. I just started over because I'm like, I don't remember shit. Because it's not really memorable moments. It's very mundane. It's kind of boring. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. It's kind of boring. It literally just follows the life of this guy and it's like he's slightly off. He's like kind of autistic. A little bit. Like he just doesn't like dealing with people. Like a woman says, you didn't do your research on my company. And they're paying them a lot of money. She's like, you didn't pay, you didn't do a lot of research on my company. And he's like, stands up from the desk and he goes, I'm not going to let a woman talk to me this way. This meeting is over and just dips. <laughs> what a power move, though. I'm not going to let a woman talk to me that way. <laughs> and she was just like, hey, I don't appreciate how you conducted this marketing campaign. It was like, the fuck, bitch? <laughs> I'm not like, going to let a woman talk to me that way. <laughs> this meeting is over. And the CEO of Lucky Strike is like, you guys are shit. And he's like, no, no, we'll figure it out. Anyways, I'm not going to keep talking about a show as mundane and bring that to, I'm not going to bring that mundaneness to this podcast. We're just going to get bored. We're going to get bored. Let's talk about something with a little more action. How about that Israel and Palestine situation, huh? There's a lot of stuff going on there. <laughs> a lot of stuff going on there, isn't there? I don't know what, but I don't know. There's a, it's a big old ruckus over there going on. I don't know why I have like this inclination that I I see a lot of people bring up the Israel Palestine conflict like in stand up when I go to stand up clubs and I'm watching people just do comedy and then they like finish their set with oh yeah this and this Palestine and Israel and it's like there's no joke at the end there's no joke at the end it's just yeah this is going on and I'm like Where's, you're doing stand-up. Where's the punchline? And there's no punchline. It's just like... And I get it. People want to spread the word. I feel that. But 
it is also a comedy show, so you can spread the word and have a punchline and make it funny. I feel like I feel like things get become more memorable when they're funny. You can get the message across with a with a funny punchline. That's what a lot of comedians do. That's why I watch a lot of George Carlin stuff. Well, I have watched, and a lot of the stuff that he says is like he memorizes these sentences and this fast pace of talking and criticizing. I just don't find it funny, though. I just don't find it all that funny. It's just like an old man being angry, but it's not funny. In the same way. At least when he talks about the political stuff. I met this one comedian. Um, I'm not going to say his name. Because I don't remember it. But he was from the States. He was doing comedy. like He was here like two weeks ago. I saw him. And we were supposed to go up on stage. This was like on a Tuesday. And... He was like, oh, yeah, this is the first time I do stand-up in, like, six years. I'm like, why six years? Because he was like, yeah, because uh, Trump got elected president, and uh, it just, nothing was funny to me. I'm like, what are you talking about? Trump was hilarious. There was so much material. There was so much things to joke about with him. And he was just like, yeah, no, it was it just hit too close to home for me. And uh, there was just nothing funny about it. And I just stopped doing comedy. I'm like, really? That's why you stopped doing comedy? Are you really a comedian then if you stop doing comedy? Because Trump got elected president. And he was like, yeah. Because I grew up in a fucking red state. Well, I was in a red state when he got elected. And I just had to leave. I'm like... All right, so let, let me get this straight. You you left and you stopped doing comedy because you were in a red state and your family, they're Republicans, so you hated your family because Orange Man was in office. You just 180'd your life for someone that didn't even 180 the country. Didn't do a lot. I mean, he has some policies here and there and some st- things happened. But you, you stopped for so many years. And it, why don't you start after he after Biden got elected then? Shouldn't everything be fine? There's a two year gap there that you just didn't I don't I don't feel like he wanted to do comedy. And then and then I went up and talked about terrorism and abortion and just little terrorism. I was talking about ISIS on stage and he was laughing. I'm like, if you can find ISIS funny, if you can find ISIS funny, you can do you can do a fucking you can do stand up in a with a Republican administration. Come on now. I saw you laugh. I saw you laugh at the terrorism joke. And you're telling me you couldn't you couldn't do comedy because Trump was in office? It, you just couldn't bring yourself. It was so bad that you couldn't bring yourself to just do what you I don't know. It don't sound like I don't it don't sound like you like comedy for real. That sounds like a brittle spirit to me. That sound like a brittle little spirit to me. A little birdie told me that you have a brittle spirit. That's all it takes. Anyways. We're going to keep talking about brittle spirits. We're going to keep talking about bullshit on the Patreon episode. We're doing good on time. We're going to switch over to Patreon. Please support the Patreon. Because if you don't support the Patreon, I have to deal with these companies talking rudely to me through email. And it's not even whoever is like the company that's like the company that brought the deal is not even the it's like another person behind them. They're like hiding behind a firewall of a person. 
if I knew who you were, you, you, uh, whoever you are, because I know they're in China. Hey, marketing guy in China. Don't fucking talk to me that way. How dare you? How dare you tell me how comedy is supposed to be done? I'm going to talk about spoiling myself. <laughs> spoiling. Soiling myself. Um, but yeah, with uh, the Patreon's help, I can do that. Uh, so I, I appreciate you guys listening to the podcast all the way through regardless. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank, just listening and leaving a like is uh, supportive as well. So I appreciate that. But yeah, we're going to switch over to the Patreon. Um And uh, we're going to keep talking shit there. This has been a fun episode, wired episode. So thank you guys so much for listening. And uh, I'll see you guys next week. Have a blessed and wonderful day. Peace out.